Here you see two PP282 vibrator power supplies. 24 volts in for this particular one, uh, 170 volts out. Here is the vibrator. This one has a regular vibrator, that still works. This one I have equipped with a solid state inverter. Silent vibrator, solid state inverter. That was modified by myself. The uh, board that is used is the uh, RFEB1, and that basically is built into this vibrator by using the existing can. And I'll show you the uh, performance. Here you see the uh, underside of the power supply. Uh, conveniently, there is a diagram in the uh, bottom which shows you basically how it's connected straightforward vibrator power supply all right we have it hooked up uh, 24 volts coming from these power supplies over there um, and we have a voltmeter that shows us how much uh, we're gonna get right now there is still eight volts left in the uh, in the electrolytic capacitor. Let's turn it on. <laughs> well, you can hear the uh, vibrator humming. And the voltage we get from the power supply is 175 volts. Jumps a little bit. Let's now have a look at the uh, oscilloscope picture. Alright, we have the uh, mechanical vibrator now hooked up. Let's turn on the power here and see what we get. Um, as you can see, the voltage is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, almost 50 volts, which is twice the input voltage as we expected. As you also can see is that the uh, period time is almost nine milliseconds that's actually a little bit too low it should be uh, 8.6 so this vibrator if you do the math runs at about 110 Hertz it should be 115 the other thing you can see with this vibrator is uh, from time to time the off time differs on one side to the other so it's not hundred percent symmetrical right now it's not bad but uh, if you leave it on for a while here you can see it already. This here is a shorter off time than here. And there is something strange going on there. So uh, that's another thing you obviously have with mechanical vibrators. The symmetry might not be perfect. Again, in the application it's not really that big of a deal, but it shows you that this vibrator might be coming at the end of its, uh, of its life. Um, for the rest, uh, it's not a bad signal. We obviously have an overshoot here. This is where you see the contact bounds is uh, what you would expect uh, as well from a uh, mechanical vibrator but you know all in all this one is still doing its job the question is uh, for how long the uh, voltage we get here is uh, 178.6 this is the uh, unloaded voltage and the input voltage is 24 volts the input cur current is a little bit more than 100 milliamps 110 milliamps is what we have in the idle current for this uh, uh, power supply the uh, PP282 um, which comes from an AM65 power supply uh, intercom I should say I have it hooked up on the secondary side for that I'll have to uh, go to 100 volt per division so we have one two three four hundred volt on the pri on the secondary side of the transformer the signal looks pretty much the same so the transformer gives gives the square wave almost undistorted through uh, which is pretty good for this uh, particular power supply a little bit of an undershoot there but all in all again doesn't look bad so after rectification you basically get a uh, 400 volt peak signal there all right, so that was our uh, vibrator. We're still at 176 volts, and uh, it works pretty good. Let's uh, now switch over to our solid-state uh, inverter. 
basically the same power supply with one exception the uh, vibrator was replaced by this little board our uh, RVB1 and that fits perfectly inside the can of an existing uh, vibrator let's uh, hook up the solid state version all right that's hooked up basically looks the same this is our uh, solid state uh, vibrator for the rest it's the same power supply same hookup we have the voltmeter and we have the oscilloscope let's turn on the uh, power supply and see what we get on the power supply on the oscilloscope here as you see uh, we have the same uh, cycle time of 115 Hertz uh, we got the same peak voltage 1 2 3 4 50 volts is what the uh, what the uh, solid state inverter is uh, is handling as you can see there is much less uh, overshoot because there is no contact bounds in the solid state inverter that will significantly lower the uh, the radio RF noise that you might get from the switching contacts so that by itself is a big advantage of the solid state inverter the other thing is of course uh, that the signal is much more stable it's not that important for the application but you can see here that it uh, there is no mechanical action and the signal is rock stable. Uh, the other thing is of course the noise. You won't hear uh, any noise. If you listen very carefully you can hear the transformer hum a little bit because the transformer is uh, handling a square wave and that by itself might give a little bit of acoustic noise from the transformer. If I come closer you might be able to hear it. It's, uh, it's very weak but for uh, all practical purposes might as well say it is indeed uh, completely silent. The voltage that we get is uh, on this power supply a little, a little bit higher, 184. I don't know if that comes because of variation in the transformer or maybe that the cleaner signal results in a little bit higher voltage. It's hard to say. Uh, you can see it's a lot more stable than what you saw on the other one because there is no uh, mechanical action. Um, we'll have a look at the secondary side for you as we did with the other one. All right, uh, here we are having the uh, hookup to the secondary side of the transformer. And this is our oscilloscope picture. Uh, I'm still at 10 volt per division, so I'll have to, uh, to increase that. We're now at 100 volt per division. We almost have 400 volt peak peak coming from the transformer. As you can see, signal is indeed very clean, much cleaner than what we had with the mechanical vibrator. The result is uh, the, the reason is that there is no contact bounds, as we said earlier. You can see that the vibrator emulates the off time perfectly. This is the same as what you earlier saw with the mechanical vibrator. 40% of the time we have an on signal, 10% of the time is off, to make absolutely sure that the uh, that not both MOSFETs are on at the same time. That would obviously not be desired. Also, this shape uh, uh, gives a little bit uh, a lower harmonics than what you would have with a 100% uh, square wave. So, uh, looks very nice indeed. Works uh, perfect. The voltage we got now is 190 volt. And again, I don't know if that's because of the, uh, the uh, solid state vibrator or that the transformer is just slightly uh, different from the earlier power supply. All in all, works perfectly solid state inverter and uh, will last forever no noise and also the uh, the efficiency is a little bit better I didn't show you that on the uh, earlier one but we have about 50 milliamps idle the power supply is not loaded so this is really the idle current that you see I will hook up the mechanical vibrator for you and you can see that that is higher because the uh, efficiency is a little bit less with the mechanical vibrator. All right, let's now check the uh, power supply under load. We have uh, hooked it up to a 40 watt light bulb. Might be a little bit too much, but uh, we'll see what the signal looks like then. Uh, I'm gonna turn it on. And this is what we get. The symmetry is kinda gone. The uh, high side is kind of collapsing. The low side is at ground, so that is what you would expect. So the voltage has dropped quite a lot. Uh, 
light bulb is uh, it's doing its job, but it's not at full brightness, so it must be less than 110 volts. And the power supply is humming along. It runs at 24 volts, and we're drawing 1.8 amps. Let's do the same test for the uh, solid state inverter. All right, we got the light bulb hooked up to the uh, solid state uh, inverter power supply. Let's see what we're gonna get. We're still ringing 24 volts, and this is the uh, oscilloscope. There is the uh, signal. The uh, light bulb actually is brighter, so the voltage that the power supply gets to the light bulb is higher. This probably means lower losses in the power supply. The signal also looks better, it's more symmetrical. Uh, the on-off switch uh, spikes are increasing, that was to be expected under load. As you can see the on, this is the time that the MOSFET is on. Um, that is going hard to ground, so the MOSFET is not out of saturation, which is important. That means that the uh, power dissipation in the MOSFET is still very low. But the uh, voltage on this side of the transformer is uh, lower, which is because of the load. The reason is also because the power supply has a resistor in the primary circuit. If you look at the center tap at the primary uh, part of the transformer, there is a 1.6 ohm resistor there. And that resistor is uh, here. It's getting pretty hot. That's what's causing the voltage losses. I'm assuming that is there for uh, as a current uh, uh, limiter, which under this test conditions is actually what's needed. But to summarize, the solid state inverter is doing a lot better here than a mechanical vibrator, and uh, doing quite well. This is another interesting test. I'm gonna crank up the input voltage to the power supply to compensate for the loss over the resistor. We're now at 30 volts. As you can see the, uh, the light bulb is uh, very bright now and the signal still looks pretty good. As you can see the uh, MOSFET does not saturate. I'm now actually at 32 volts. It has no problem at all. 32 volts means that the uh, MOSFET during off time is actually seeing uh, over 60 volts. And uh, well, actually, it's less now because of the drop across the resistor. But we're now at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're at 53, 54 volts on the, uh, on the MOSFET as it is uh, in the off position. Here it's on. So you see, it's uh, doing a pretty good job. The uh, solid, state solid, solid state inverter is doing uh, good under these conditions, which I would think are uh, very extreme loads. This is much more than what a uh, vibrator would see under normal uh, circumstances in radio equipment. Works quite well. Let's do another test. We're running at 24 volts now. What happens when I go down? You will see that the vibrator, the solid state vibrator, will work perfectly okay all the way down to very low voltages. I'm now down to 5, 4 volts. As you can see, the solid state vibrator is capable of handling, handling voltages lower than 4 volts. Well, I can show you here, 4 volt. This is where it, this is where it kicks out, which is actually 2.2.8, 2 I would think. Our solid state inverter is still working at 2.8 volt, going all the way up to 32 now. Now I'm at 32. It's not a problem. Let's do this test with the mechanical vibrator and see what we're getting there. All right, we're now back to the mechanical, vibra mechanical vibrator under load, and we'll see what happens if we lower the voltage. Let's see 
Not bad. It basically has some hysteresis. That looks kind of weird. Well, it obviously wasn't designed for this. It stops at uh, 2.5 volts and it takes 6 volt to get it going again. Waveform looks, looks pretty weird at that point. And here it starts to look normal. We're now back at uh, 24 volts. Now 32 volt is probably not a good idea. It wasn't designed for that. So mechanical vibrator does work at lower voltages but the signal looks pretty weird. Well that concludes our uh, video of the uh, solid state drop-in uh, replacement for a uh, mechanical vibrator. And this is the uh, board that's doing it all. The RVB1. And like I said we have the uh, PP282 one with the solid state inverter and one with the uh, solid state vibrator I should say one with the regular vibrator and you have seen the differences between the two I think the solid state inverter came out to clear winder especially under load and we're gonna put the PP282 back into my uh, AM65 uh, uh, intercom which is uh, also a power supply for the RT70 Thank you for, uh, for watching this video.